Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. What's today? The fourth? The, I think it's the fourth. February the fourth. Yes. God bless y'all today. Uh, we made it all the way through January. It seemed like the year just started and we're already in the second month. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm not uh, big on uh, certain holidays or anything, but it's Black History Month. So God bless you. I, I feel like I'm Black all year round. So this is just one part of it. Listen, uh, I'm Pastor James Ziegler. I want to tell you what our vision statement is. It's Colossians 3, 1 and 2. It says, if then you have been raised with Christ, then seek the things that are above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above and not on the things on this earth. Now, listen, I wholeheartedly believe in that. And I know that if we set our minds on things that are above, we won't be so distracted about what we see here on this earth. Amen. Good. And, and so I'm glad to see you this morning. It, it's the first Sunday in February. We are going to take the Lord's Supper in just a little bit. But um, before that, I, I want to give you a word. And uh, and before I even do that, let's pray real quick. Lord, I thank you for this day. Thank you for the morning, God. Even though the wind is cold outside, God, we thank you for giving us life to be able to feel whatever it is, God. Even when the weather changes, God, we give you glory, honor, and praise, God. So I'm asking for your blessings. I'm asking that you surround us all. Keep us keep us strong and keep us in a good will, God, to do your will. God, we appreciate you and we love you and we glorify you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now, listen to this. Listen to this. I, I'm coming from the book of Exodus, chapter 14. I'm going to read verses 10 through 14. I want you to pay attention to this sermon real quick. Uh, and, and this is what the word of the Lord says in uh, Exodus 14. Verse 10 says, as Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said, Moses... Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us out here in the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Listen, I read that scripture, and today I want to tell you to stop worrying so much and leave things in the hands of the Lord and watch him make a way for you. Well, my title today is an Egyptian deliverance. You have to want it to be delivered. If you want to be delivered, you got to want it, first of all. And so I want to tell you, there are too many people in this day and time that act like the Israelites of old, not the Israelites today. I'm talking about the Israelites of old who will only be excited and, and supportive when things are looking good. Y'all know some people like that, where it only, only when it's good, they're going to be around. But as soon as things look like they are about to take a turn for the worse, you'll find people starting to complain and, and they want to go back to the old way of living. I want to go back to what I used to do because this ain't working and blah, blah, blah. We start complaining to people who helped us get where we are. <laughs> we start complaining about why we are where we are and, 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 and where and, and, and all, if somebody did something to us to put us here. We, listen, what I'm telling you is we lose heart too quickly and, and we forget how, how we got to the place we're at now. It was nobody but the hands of the Lord who brought us this far. We forget that if, if he brought us this far, then he certainly will take us the rest of the way. But because we're looking at the things we, that's in front of us, we, 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 we're thinking about things that could stop us uh, because it's right in front of our face. And then we start focusing on the things that are behind us. Oh, uh, people are behind me. The army is trying to get me. And, and, and in all of that, the crazy part is we lose sight of God. We, we lose sight of 
the future that he has for us. And, and he already knows the destination he wants us to be in and where we're going. But yet we, we are ready to give up so easy. Although he has already delivered us one time, we still don't trust the process. As many times as he's delivered you and brought you out, you you still have this Egyptian mindset. This no, no Israelite mindset. Oh, I want to stay in Egypt. You gotta want the deliverance to be moved. Even he even told Moses. God told Moses in verse fifteen, "Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on." God is saying, now, I, didn't I give you the instructions? Didn't, didn't, didn't I already tell you what was going to happen when, when you went and, and you know, and I, you told Pharaoh and I sent frogs, I sent plagues, I, I made the river turn, the blood. Didn't, I gave you all the instructions. Why are they worried about it now? Why are you crying? Why are you still standing there looking dumbfounded? Why, why are you doing that? The Lord is going to fight for you. I'm talking to you right now. The Lord is going to fight for you. And, and all he asks you to do is stand firm and watch his hand and keep moving forward. Don't turn around and look back what, what you're going to miss. That's how lots of white got killed. Don't be turning right back. Don't start cussing nobody out. Don't be trying to fight with the big bully just because that bully. Don't pull out no guns. Don't call Pookie and the crew. But just keep moving and see the hands of the Lord over your life. We all have been in a situation where we thought that somebody was after us and, and they, they were getting closer upon us to destroy us. And, I mean, they probably not physically, but with what they knew about us, what, what they had to say about us, what they had the rumors and, and, and all the accolades. But all of a sudden, something changed. <laughs> we, we couldn't tell you how, and, and I can't tell you when it happened, but all we know is those same people who were after us ain't after us no more. Do you know what I'm saying? You Haven't you been on a job where you thought, oh, they, they treat me like this, they do it? No, 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 no. It's some certain people, but they ain't there no more. They ain't after you no more. Like Moses said to the Israelites, the Egyptians that you see today, you will never see again. And when I read that, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if Moses knew that God was going to drown the Egyptians. I, I don't know. Y'all know this story. It, I, 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 didn't, I don't know if Moses actually, if God actually told Moses that he was going to drown the, musician, the, the Egyptians. But guess what? Moses had this mind. He had this mind made up that God was going to deliver them from the Egyptians, whether they drowned or whether the Israelites just got far away enough from them, from Egypt, that they wouldn't chase them anymore. I don't know how, how Moses saw it, but he told him that today, the Egyptians that you see today, you will never see again. I, 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 and listen, either way, listen, either way, they weren't going to see them ever again. And this is how we have to see things in our lives. No matter what the problem is, God, I'm not sure what you're doing. I, I'm not sure what you're going to do or how you're going to do it. But but the one thing that I do know is that you're going to deliver me from this Egypt experience. God, you got to make a way for me. God even allowed an angel. I, in the story, it says that an angel led the Israelites and led them uh, where they needed to go. And, and the Egyptians, when the Egyptians got closer to them, because they had these chariots and, and all these fine horses, the angel left from in front of the Israelites and went to the back of them. I like this. He went back and, and it was a pillar of clouds that separated the Israelites from the Egyptians. Listen, why, why am I telling you this? Because, listen, there are some people that may not like you. They may not care, and they may be after you. But God is going to commit and have a separation between y'all where they can't touch you. And then in, in verse 25, God calls the wheels to the chariots and, to become jammed. And, 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 and it, there was a pillar of clouds and fire, and it confused the Egyptians. They didn't know which way they were going. They had to stop and just stay where they were. But guess what? This is what's crazy. They knew then that God was fighting on the behalf of the Israelites. But God had hardened his heart and he kept going after God's people. Just like he fought for them, he'll fight for you. 
I, why am I saying that, preacher? And God was showing his power and his might, but most of all, he was showing his protection and his deliverance power. And, and if you would do that, if God would do that for a bunch of complaining people that, that had no trust in his provision or his plan, and then how much more would he do for you if you totally trust him? God, God made a way for those Israelites, even in the midst of them complaining and being upset because where they were and, and they felt like they were trapped. Even if God hadn't brought them out that far and now they're complaining, if, if he'll do it for them, why wouldn't he do it for you? The, the, I'll tell you what the problem is. The problem is we fall short on our trust when we let our faith get weak. See, we, we, we always talk about this trust in God thing and, and you ought to trust in God. But what happens when you lose the trust? Because your faith has gotten too weak. I'm going to tell you, in Matthew chapter 17 and 20, 20 says, he replied, who replied? Jesus replied. He said, because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, <laughs> you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. What am I saying? Listen, I always wondered why the Bible talked about a mustard seed. You only had to have faith the size of a mustard seed and, and a mustard seed is so small you could barely see it. And, 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 and I started thinking about that's because we get weak in our faith so often. We, 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 we don't trust God like we say we do. We move around, but we ain't got the faith that we do. I believe the Israelites were only successful in their journey just off of the faith of Moses. That's listen, it was all these people, all, all these Israelites. And I think just because Moses had the faith, because he had talked to God, that's how they made it. His faith and his obedience to follow God's plan allowed him to split a Red Sea and save God's people. Now, listen to me. Today, I don't want to just work off Moses' faith. I'm not trying to work off that. I, I can't work off my mama's faith, off my wife's faith. I, I want to have my own faith that I believe that God will make a way and deliver me from this Egypt experience, whatever that Egypt experience may be for you. I want you to know, even if it's in a foreign land, or even if it's in the desert, or, or and even when, when it comes to my toughest times, when you have your hardest time, I want to remember what he has done before. I want you to remember in, in past what God has done, even up to this present, and how he has made a way so many times before. I think about that, and when I was writing this sermon, I just started to think about how God has always been there for me, always delivering me from an Egypt experience where it was uncomfortable. It seemed like people were after me. It seemed like nobody cared. It seemed like people were talking about me. No, no, but I wanted to be delivered. I wanted to leave that situation. Some people don't want to leave it. Uh-uh, uh-uh. He's made a way too many times before. And, and this story... Of, of the deliverance of the Israelites is one of those encouragement stories. It's an example to us that God can deliver you through the most severe parts of your life. And, and, and I don't know what it is. We can be of all different ages and we can all have something different, a different experience of what our Egypt experience is going through, what we're doing. So what they don't like, I, I don't care if they don't like you, so what they don't like. They're not supposed to like you when you're different from them. When, when you're living for God, I do not care. So what? They're trying to find things on you to ruin you. Listen, that wouldn't matter to me. Satan has always had one tactic to steal, kill, and destroy. That tactic is to make you look bad. The same way he tried to do Job. He's like, you know, God, if I get to Job, he's going to cuss you to die. You know what? This man don't really love now. So what? They're after you. That, that doesn't mean that you give up and start complaining about your circumstances. You call on the name of the Lord. That's what you do. Call on the name of Jesus and let him be your strong tower in your darkest hour. Let him be your Red Sea and watch how things start to open up for you, well, just like the Israelites. But, but you have to want to be delivered. You got to want to be delivered. Somebody say delivered. You got to want to 
be delivered. Some of us don't want to be delivered. You know, if you're an alcoholic, you if you keep drinking and you don't think, listen, you can't say you want to be delivered and, 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 and you ain't been, you ain't gave up what you had because soon as you want to be delivered, God will deliver you. I don't care if, if you smoked all your life. I don't, I don't care what you're doing, ran in the streets. I, listen, you got to want to be delivered to get out of that Egypt experience. Some of us want to stay in the same place where we have always been a slave to our sins. Mm. Our whole life, just because it was comfortable for us. Yeah. Doesn't mean it was right. It was just comfortable for us. The Egyptians came close. They did. They came close to the Israelites. But they were not successful in what they set out to do. And neither will your enemies or anyone else that tries to come against you. Not even your sins. No, no. The water from the sea may, may make things real slippery and, and it may make things muddy, but keep it this way. It, it will make it hard for you to walk on, on it, but God will send a whirlwind <laughs> that will dry up the land that you need to walk on and have you walking across dry land without any difficulties. Somebody say deliverance. deliverance. He's going to deliver you. That's all I can tell you. I, I, I don't know how, how he's going to do it. I don't have no magical, magical potion to tell you. Moses didn't have he didn't, he didn't know what God was really going to do. God just gave him instruction and he was delivered. I want you to know that your deliverance is coming. Whatever you're asking God to do, just believe and have faith and watch it come to life. I've seen God make ways out of nowhere and remove people from your life that had no purpose. I've seen that happen. God will remove some people from your life that have no purpose, but the only purpose that they had was help you to strengthen you to move forward. I've seen him send financial blessings just at the right time when you needed it. Not, not because you wanted it all the time. I'm talking about he blessed you right when you need it. I, listen, I'll give you an example. I got a $38 check the other day from, from my mortgage company because it, I overpaid them. And, and I was excited about that little $38. I'm talking about right, right when you need it. I've seen him do it. I've seen him heal people just on the brink of death and then it turned around. So why are you feeling like you're alone right now? Why Why do you feel that way? Why do you feel like you by yourself? Why do you feel like, you know, that this whole time God hasn't been with you? Why are you walking around with this look on your face? Like you got an attitude about something or or, or you stuck at the Red Sea and, and your worst enemy has you has snuck up on you and they about to take your life. Why are you walking around with this, this nasty attitude as if somebody owes you something? When, when God has made a way so many times before, yes, I get excited. He's made a way too many times for me to be walking around. It, it, it would be different. If he had never delivered you before, I wouldn't be talking to you like this. If, if he had never made a way for you before, I wouldn't tell you that you could be delivered. But you know it because he's done it time and time again. But yet he keeps doing it over and, and over and over again. And, and you still are complaining. you complaining like the Israelites trying to cross some water that he has already delivered people across before. I look at the Red Sea and say, if they did it, he'll do it for me. And listen. Things cannot be that bad in your life that we walk around not showing the loving deliverance power of God. No, 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 no. If he's delivered you from something before, it's nothing that you shouldn't be able to testify to somebody and say, oh, he did this for me. Oh, he, he did that for me. Oh, he did. Listen, he you going through this? Listen, he did this for me before. He's done too much in our lives. Not to trust him now. I'm not saying that your situation is not bad. That's not what I'm saying. Because all of us have been through some bad situations. So I ain't saying anything bad. But what I am saying is that he can deliver you just like he did Job. Job was in a bad situation. Listen, I, 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 I thought about it. He delivered Abraham and Isaac out of a bad situation. Can you imagine God telling you to go, uh, go sacrifice your son? And can you imagine your son being old enough to understand that he's on the side of a mountain and something has to be sacrificed? There's nobody else there but him and, and, and his father. And, and he don't say nothing. 
No, God delivered. Soon as he got ready to do what God told him to do, there was a ram in the bush. I, I'm telling you, if you if you pay attention to God, just like he did Jacob. Listen, I know Jacob had a bad situation. His brother sold him into slavery. Things. Listen how he walked out. Just like he did it, did it for Daniel uh, in the lion's did. Just like he did it for the three Hebrew boys in the fire. Just like he did it for the Israelites. And all I want to let you know is he'll do it for you. If you would only trust him the same way he did it for these people in the past and he's done it, so he'll do it for you. I have one more thing. I, I, I got to explain this one more thing and then I'm going to get out of here. Do you, Moses, I don't know if you ever noticed this, you know, they always have this movie in their show where Moses stretched out his rod over the sea and, and split the Red Sea. But do you know Moses raised his staff twice concerning this? It, it, through this ordeal at the Red Sea, he raised his staff twice. He raised it once and the waters divided and, 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 and allowed God's people, after God sent the whirlwind for it to dry, allowed them to walk on dry land. The Bible says it was two walls of water on, on each side of them for them to get through. And, and then God sent the wind and dried up the land and the Israelites got to the other side. The second time is when they got on the other side. God told Moses to raise the staff again. And the second time he did it, the waters went back to its original place. But it was too late for the Egyptians. They were trying to still chase them. If, 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 if I was chasing somebody and I start seeing stuff like water parting in, in walls on the side, if, I, 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 if my... My, my 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 horses and my chariots start messing up. If I saw whirlwinds and fire, you know what? It would make me want to think and turn around. But because his heart, Pharaoh's heart, was hardened, he still came after them. And when the waters went back to the original place, they all died. This is what I want you to get out of this. Even if your enemies are bold enough to come after you, even after they've seen the miracles that, that God has supplied for you, even after they've seen everything God does and has done for you, listen, if they still choose to be bold enough to come after you, then, then they will be just like the Egyptians. Now, I'm not wishing no death on nobody. I ain't talking about they gonna drown. I'm saying they ain't gonna be a part of your life no more. And everything they try to do, you will dr drown and die. Everything they try to do, it will drown and it will die. I ain't talking about them personally. I'm talking about the situation. Y'all got to understand, God is a, a way maker. <laughs> he, he has this delivering power. But the only way this will happen, the only way that this kind of stuff is happening is if you have the faith. You got to have the faith to move away from Egypt. Whatever your Egypt experience is that's got a stronghold on you, you got to have faith to get away from it. And, and, and you choose to live a delivered life that God has planned for you. Then there's no king, there's no army, there's no Red Sea that can block you from your deliverance. I'm telling you, trust God and, and, and have an Egypt deliverance. But you have to want it. You got to want it. Instead of you walking around with this crazy look on your face and saying that, but you're saying you love God and, and, and how God has made a way and, and he doing this, but yet you walking around like you're defeated, like Pharaoh didn't caught up to you and made you go back to slavery. No. No, no, no. The army can't get you. Like, like, like Moses said in the end, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. You, you, you didn't get it when, when he said, don't be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance that the Lord will bring today. The Egyptians you see today. Well, no, you'll never see again. The, the, the problems you see today, the, the hurt you feel today, the, the, pro the sinfulness, listen, it can be delivered and, and you ain't got to never see it again. All you got to do is want it. You got to, you got to want it. Yes, God. And the only reason that we preach these sermons I, is because of Romans chapter 10 and verse nine, that if that, if, if, if thou shalt uh, uh, confess with your mouth, and believe in your heart that God has raised you from the raised Christ from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. Now, I, I don't want people just to be saved. I, I want people to be delivered 
from some things. Because we're going to go some, through some things in our life. And I want you to be delivered from it. I don't want you having to be standing around worrying and, and crying and, 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 and fussing and mad at other people because you are in a situation. No, 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 no. Ask God for the deliverance. He'll do it just like he did the, the Israelites. Listen, I, I want to take the Lord's Supper briefly. If you have just one brief minute with me, let's take the Lord's Supper. It's first Sunday. Uh, get you some juice and crackers, and, and, and let's take the Lord's Supper. If you want to be a blessing to the church, you can give to our cash app. It's money sign high ground CC or give LaFi or PayPal. Or you can sell it to the church. I don't even know if this is a phone number. Put the name in and you can do that. But uh, we're going to take the... The Lord's Supper. I was I was thinking about something this morning. Uh, and it's always got me good. Uh, this song it says, "I trust in God, wherever I may be. If it's out on the land or out on the raging sea." Oh, come what may, from day to day, my heavenly Father watches over, over me. I trust in God. I know he cares for me. On mountain bleak or out on the raging sea, though billows roll, he keeps my soul. My heavenly father watches over, over me. I get excited about that song every time. I, I And I can sing it to myself. I ride around singing that when I'm by myself. How he, I trust in God. I know he cares for me. On mountain bleak. Or out on the raging sea. Though billows roll. He keeps my soul, my heavenly Father watches over, over me. Listen, in those last days, Jesus was getting ready to leave his disciples, and he, and he took some bread and he broke it. He was giving them instructions on how to, to run the church and how to build the church and what they needed to do. And he said, he took the bread and he said, this bread represents my body. As often as you do it, do this in remembrance of me. And he blessed it. Lord, bless this bread, God. Let it be a representation of, of Jesus's body. Let nothing get us sick, God. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. amen. And then he took some wine, likewise. And, and we're going to take this juice. And he said, this, this, this is the new covenant, the new revelation of my blood, New Testament. I want you to know that this represents my blood, and as often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. And then he prayed for, Lord, I ask that you bless this juice, God, to flow through our blood, God, just as Jesus' blood, God, to keep us and protect us and watch over us and continue to save us. We appreciate you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Take it and drink. Yes, sir. And uh, I, I, I'm just grateful. For, for for some of you that know the delivering power of Jesus, it's only 12, 20. Now, I, 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 I thank God for the delivering power of Jesus. And I don't like preaching too long because folk will uh, switch out and they won't pay attention too long. But if I give you something for you to remember, in Egypt deliverance, you have to want it. That's what I want you to remember. Just remember that God will deliver you he will no matter what your circumstances no matter what your situations he he's a deliverer i want you to walk around and start tomorrow put a smile on your face and put more joy and warmth in your heart don't continue to live in in, in a down trout situation where god is not good his love 
it, it's more than than we ever could imagine. And and I want you to live that way. Put a smile on your face. Show somebody else that God has delivered you from so many things, and he's going to do it again. Let me pray. Lord, I thank you now for your love, your compassion, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you for your word. I'm asking that you cover the people. God, continue to keep us, God, in your care so that we can live for you, God, and do the things that you would require for us to do, God. We want to be delivered. We want it. We have the faith that it can be done. We give it all to you. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. Have enjoy the rest of this day, and and uh, I'll see you on Tuesday for Bible study. God bless you.